the Shasta Daisy. So big, so bright, so beautiful, so carefree, it's become a garden staple. That's why it's hard to believe that one man spent 17 years perfecting it, making this flower what it is today. And as if that weren't enough, Luther Burbank wanted to feed the world too. Barbara Coe is the garden curator here at Luther Burbank's garden in Santa Rosa, California. I am absolutely amazed by this man's work. Luther was involved with almost every kind of plant. He loved so many plants that anything you produce in the way of vegetable or ornamental, Mr. Burbank looked at and was fascinated by. We know that he has verified over 800 different plants that were hybridized selected or just ones that he brought from another country and felt they needed to be introduced because they were already a complete work on their own and I'd love to show a few of them to you here. Oh I'd love to take a look. Great. This is a good example of Mr. Burbank's penstemons. He introduced penstemon scarlet bugler in 1911. They're easy care in the garden. <laughs> And the hummingbirds just love them in my garden. Very easy care, you're right. Now, you look like you can grow just about anything in this garden. Yes, Mr. Burbank selected this site because his two half-brothers lived in Tomales Bay, and they wrote back to him when he was in Massachusetts explaining that the climate here was the best in the world. You gotta see it, come on out. That's right. This is beautiful, what a vibrant kind of orangey red. This is Zauschneria californica, called Everett's Choice. This is a selection of one of our California native fuchsias. And this particular bed represents many of the California native plants that Mr. Burbank was investigating. Wow, it's just beautiful. Now we're over on the street side of the garden to see something really special. Mr. Burbank worked for many years with bulbs and one of these is an evergreen crinum, which has these beautiful white to pink flowers, a great fragrance. He hybridized those after many years with Amaryllis belladonna, which is commonly called the naked lady. I can see why. It has no leaves, they're deciduous at this time. After many, many years, he was able to finally get a successful seed crop, and what came out of that was the Amarcrinum, which has wonderful fragrance and evergreen leaves. And evergreen leaves. Oh, imagine seeing that for the very first time, Barbara. Would have been very exciting, the culmination of many, many years of his work. Thank you for showing me just a few of the flowers that Mr. Burbank uh, worked on. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome, Anne. And we have someone here, one of our garden interpreters, that will show you some edibles. Oh, great. This is Seaman Miedema. Hi, Ed. Hello. Let's go and see some edibles. All right. First stop on our tour, I cannot believe how big this cactus is. Well, this cactus is over 80 years old, and uh, Luther Burbank wanted to develop a spineless cactus so that cattle could eat it without bleeding with all the spines. Did it work? It worked so great that uh, they would chomp it down to the ground. All the way to the ground. So we've got some cattle food here. We never have explained about the potato. The long and the short is, when he was about 22 years old, there were only one potato available that was mushy and not a good keeper. And uh, during his farming days, he was able to develop the what we now call the russet Burbank potato. It's a firmer potato, it has more nutrients, and is a better keeper than anything that was on the market. Well, you know, next time I go to the grocery store, I'm going to think of Luther Burbank. After all, edible plants were his specialty. That Burbank russet potato, not only is it more nutritious and a better keeper, it is also blight resistant and was exported by the ton to help Ireland recover from their devastating potato famine. Known as the plant wizard, Mr. Burbank worked hard in his greenhouse laboratory and test fields, often having as many as 3,000 separate experiments involving millions of plants going on at the same time. His goals were to improve the quality and disease resistance of all fruits and vegetables as well as nuts and grains, all to increase the world's food supply. Mr. Burbank thought that if he could help feed hungry people, we could avoid war forever. He was working on wheat as World War I broke out. 
The produce section of our local grocery store wouldn't be nearly as interesting if it weren't for the fruit of Luther Burbank's labor. Luther Burbank kept some pretty impressive company in his day. He was friends with some of the most influential innovators of the 19th and 20th centuries. So while his friend Thomas Edison was creating the light bulb and Henry Ford was tinkering with the car, Luther Burbank set his sights on making flowers and food more plentiful. So I know these pieces can be a little time intense.